Joining me now is esteemed geologist, Professor Ian Plymer. Let's start with uh, Peter Dutton upping the ante on the nation's energy policy and its net zero commitments. Uh, the usual political pundits did what they always do. They warned of electoral backlash and even oblivion. The chief political correspondent for the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age, David Crow, wrote on Friday that Dutton's policy of astonishing weakness on the climate is risking a liberal wasteland saying the policy won't win back the voters who fled to the crossbench and it can make the Liberal campaigns far more difficult in other urban seats. But today, Crow reported in the Sydney Morning Herald that Dutton was uh, now preferred Prime Minister in, the la in their latest poll. And uh, the political pundits <laughs> in always in this country advise coalition uh, parties to go to the centre, what they really mean is to go to the left. Uh, and I believe that is a recipe for electoral oblivion, as we have seen in, in Victoria and we saw at the last WA election. And Peter Dutton is proving that if you actually stand for something and you articulate your position on energy policy, you can win hearts and minds. Well, the poor old socialist moaning herald in Sydney. It was one of the greatest newspapers in the world and has now become a socialist moaning herald. It moans and groans on all sorts of green issues. It almost every time it gets things wrong. And once they start giving Dutton advice, then it's game over. Dutton has clearly hit a chord, as did Abbott, as have many of the conservative parties in Europe, as have many people in the US with Trump, um, Dutton is hitting the chord, and that is we have had this massive ingress of wind and solar power into our energy systems. Every time we put more wind and solar into our systems, our costs go up. There's something fundamentally mm. wrong. And what Dutton is saying is we're going to have another look at this. Now, I don't think he's gone far enough, but um, let's let's see how it goes. But the public is well behind him on this. They are hurting, especially people in suburbia. They are really hurting with absolutely monstrous electricity bills. So the Socialist Morning mm. Herald and AIDS in Melbourne are basically supporting the current uh, green agenda of the government. Well, the ABC are uh, upping their an the ante as far as uh, fighting any sort of nuclear uh, strategy in this country. They say they went to Australia's <laughs> biggest companies, they went to fund managers, they went to mining giants, and they asked whether they think nuclear is a viable option for meeting emission targets. And apparently the response from all these pe folks was it's, it's a unicorn and impossible without subsidies. What do you make of the ABC's reporting here, Ian? Well, it's it's very biased. They're a green activist network. Uh, they represent the green vote, which is 10% of the vote across the nation. And the vote of one um, company director or the vote of one uh, fund manager is the same as the vote of someone in Western Sydney or, or Melbourne. Their vote is nothing special. They're the ones who are paying the bills. Those corporate executives can afford to pay thousands of dollars extra for their electricity because they're getting paid inordinate amounts of money. So it's certainly not representative of the electorate. It's certainly not giving a balanced view. And the ABC is trying to drive a political wedge into a policy that they don't like. Maybe they should be having two sides of the debate uh, discussed, but the ABC cannot do this. They have now been captured by the Greens. So um, the nuclear wedge is one which is rather ridiculous because we have a nuclear power station in Sydney. It creates medical isotopes which get flown to the Pacific Islands and as far as Western Australia. Um, anyone who's been seriously ill has been dependent upon a reactor in Australia. We have mm. many countries with reactors. Um, those countries that buy our yellow cake from um, South Australia are 
countries that have reactors and they burn this yellow cake in the reactors. So um, we are one of the few countries, advanced countries in the world, without nuclear power. It's not a, a, a monster. Mm. It's not a it's well known, well established. I've used nuclear reactors in my research work. I've seen nuclear reactors in the centre of towns. Uh, nuclear reactors um, are tried and proven technology. They are lasting um, technologies and they produce a monstrous amount of electricity. Well, it's a little bit rich, I think, for the ABC to be quoting these uh corporate uh, heavyweights talking about this will be impossible without subsidies. I mean, where would renewables be without subsidies? Well, and I do wonder the... what... Go ahead. Maybe the ABC should run on renew... renewable power. And that, I think, would be wonderful. <laughs> I don't listen or watch the ABC, but you would have, on some days, only 3% of the transmission. Um, that's the amount of renewables that go into the system. So maybe they should put their money where their mouth is and only run on renewables. I'm not going to hold my breath. No, and uh, I would imagine uh, some of these people they went to for their considered advice may have investments in uh, technologies, perhaps renewables that are going to be impacted if we have a nuclear industry. So that's another thing to, to consider with this uh, reporting that uh, is as uh, fair and balanced as we expect from the ABC. Now, the uh, financial reviews, uh, John Keogh has accused the CSIRO of not giving a fair comparison between nuclear and renewables in their latest report, which asserts wind and solar are the lowest cost new build electricity generation in Australia. They claim that it's significantly cheaper than nuclear. But the AFR's reporting says they're not comparing apples to, and apples. They're comparing apples to oranges. They're underplaying the potential use of nuclear by restricting their cost calculation to just 30 years. It's something we've discussed previously on this program. And they're making all sorts of other assumptions that tip the scales in favour of renewables. Uh, has the CSIRO lost credibility, Ian, with this... Uh, <coughs> activism masquerading as unbiased uh, as an unbiased report because we do expect this body just to give us the facts not to be a, a political player it says RO has an estimate and that's for science uh, this is an economic report this is for other groups to do the CSIRO should focus on its big science should focus on making Australia more prosperous now that report doesn't deal with the cost of putting in transmission right across uh, prosperous farmland. It doesn't deal with destroying farmland uh, to put in solar and wind. It doesn't deal with the permanent loss of food production in these areas. It also is quite misleading and deceptive because nuclear power stations do not last 30 years. They last at least 60 years and sometimes longer. And a nuclear power station um, is put where there is an existing grid. That is where there may well have been a coal-fired power, power station. So the costs are significantly lower. The second thing is they've exaggerated the uh, longevity of wind and solar and they've given it a 25 yeah. year life now normally it's about 15 years if you're very lucky and you've got a westerly wind and the sun is shining so um this report is sheer and absolute political propaganda this is the csro attempted to carry favor with a government that's a green government this is a csro chasing funds rather than chasing the truth and big science Professor Ian Plymer, thank you so much for your time this evening.